So as I alluded to in a previous video, um, yeah, where I went to clean my sister's PC, I laid my hands on a baker's dozen old PCs from the 2008 to 2010 range for the low, low price of basically 10 bucks. But they were free, but I asked if he was sure that he was just getting rid of them, and he said, well, you can tip me 10 bucks if you want. So I gave him 10 bucks for 13 PCs. Now, you and I can both do the math on that and know that that is less less than one dollar a pc so are any of these computers worth a dollar so one of the first things i did was try to figure out how many of these i could get into my car to bring back here um, uh, she lives about two hours away so transporting was fun uh, i stuck him in my trunk and there are a couple of them in the back seat and I went ahead and drove back. Uh, I brought 10 PCs back with me and uh, to varying results. All right, some of these will vary quite a bit. This one has a Celeron D with DDR2 memory. Uh, it does have a 300 watt power, power supply, so we'll see what's going on there, but uh, obviously no GPU connector or anything like that. Uh, wouldn't have needed one at this stage in the game. Uh, still, it's a larger box, which might do well for, say, a sleeper build. This one has a, a, quad, a Core 2 Duo in it, uh, again, 300 watt power supply. Uh, I'll have to go through and figure out what all this has as far as connections. And then some of these thinner ones, uh, yeah, those only have about a 100 watt power supply, but they do have a more powerful processor. So we're gonna have to figure out what we got in each of these boxes and find out what we can do with what. So I put a brand new CMOS battery, testing some of these with a CMOS battery. Some of them it's working to get the ones that didn't boot up. Uh, this one in particular is not happy, so that means there's going to be something else wrong with it that we'll have to find out. And some, even with a new CEOS battery, um, are just going to play dead. So this is a different problem. This one, however, does have DDR3 memory in it, so that's good. So that's three PCs now with DDR3, and a bunch with DDR2. All these are Dell Optiplexes, with the exception of one of the e-machine computers that I left behind. All of these are either slim or regular size. Dells. They range from uh, the 320s, the Optiplex 320s to Optiplex 760s, and they are all going to be one and two core CPUs, either having a Core 2 Duo or Core 2 Duo or Pentium processor in them. Now, as I've already mentioned, some of the video you probably already saw, uh, there's some larger cases and smaller cases. There is a mix of DDR2 and DDR3, and what I found out of the ones that are DDR2 that work. There's two of them that are Core 2 Duos running on an E8400 there are with 4 gig of memory, uh, DDR2. Uh, there, are, there was one Core 2 Duo with an E7200. I believe that's a little bit slower. I don't remember exactly what the, what the frequency range was. But then there's two Pentiums, just Pentium processors, E5300 and E2200. Both of those only had 1 gig of DDR2 memory. Did find two working DDR3 in the slim line. Uh, DDR3 being the memory, both of these were Pentium E5800s, and uh, I haven't even looked to see what, what the speed or anything of that is. I think that is still a single core CPU, but it could be wrong. If I am wrong, I'll go ahead and put it up here. Uh, both of those had two gig of DDR3 um, and two single, two single gig sticks. Now, I have something that might work for that later. We'll see. Of the ones that did not post, the two that were still flashing amber, both of those happened to be DDR2 machines, I believe. Uh, they had, one of them had two gig, one of them had four gig. And then I did find one more machine that had DDR3 memory. It actually had four gig, it was two, two gig sticks in one of the larger cases. I don't, do not know what those CPUs are yet because obviously I'd have to start taking stuff apart. Um, the first round was just to see how many of them I could get to post. Six of them posted, four of them did not. The second round was to change the CMOS battery, make sure that all oh, the memory was seated and the, um, the PSU connectors onto the motherboard and all that stuff were seated properly. Uh, out of that, one more of them did post, uh, three did not. Two of them had the flashing amber lights, which indicates something else, possibly memory, possibly something else. Uh, did not have you know, Dell's blinking code to tell me which, which area to go look in. It was just quickly flashing. The other one was just dead. I had an amber light on the motherboard and nothing else, so we'll have to go see. In any case, what do we do with these 10 working computers? 
non working working whatever what what do we end up doing with these now because these are all one and two core pcs they're all from 2008 to 2010 um we are not going to be able to put a modern day rig together with any of these these are it's just simply not going to happen We'll be lucky if we're able to configure any of these for Windows 10. Uh, I will more than likely have to step back to Windows 7 or a version of 8 or 8.1. Um, yeah, so yeah, cringe. Yeah, cringe moment. But in any case, we'll probably have to step back to an earlier version. But I did get Windows 10 to work on a Q6600 with DDR2 memory about three years ago when I was trying to test a different motherboard. I believe that one came out of the, oh, it did come out of the HP machine. The uh, case of that is currently my server. Now, out of these, on the surface, the one I'm most interested in is the one that the larger one that has the DDR3 memory in it. If I can get that to work, I might be able to put the Q6600 that I already have with the little tape tricks that it runs at the maximum front uh, front serial bus speed. If I can get that in there and I can get that working with DDR3 memory, I might be able to use. A video card like a GT 1030 or maybe even a GTX 1660 or maybe an RX 480 to see if I can't get some kind of usable or playable experience out of it. Now, this is not going to be a, a modern day gaming ring. We already know that. This is probably going to be something that's going to be, uh, you know, if I can get 30 frames per second out of a game that was released in, say, 2010, 2014, 2016, then I think I'll be doing pretty well. That includes some games as old as maybe some of the Tomb Raider games or maybe some of the Dirt games or, you know, a game like Unreal, something like that that I remember a lot of these games only got 30 frames per second or that was the expected standard, 30 frames per second back 10, 12 years ago. If I can get 30 frames per second out of a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider or anything like that, um, yeah, I mean, that might be a little, a little bit aggressive. That might be a little bit uh, wishful thinking. But if I can get, say, Dirt to run uh, or any of these older ones, if I can get one of the Dirt, you know, Dirt 3, Dirt 4, Dirt 5 to run at least 30 frames per second, maybe we're into something here. And this might be a good kind of novelty, like, hey, look, I got this to work, and it obviously can make a decent video. One of these is probably going to have to be sacrificed for this puppy right here. Now, this is a Xeon. Uh, the socket in all of these is a 775. This Xeon will fit. Technically, it'll fit, but it won't work because this is a 771 socket. Basically, the difference between a 775 and a 771 is a 90 degree turn and two of the pins are different. Uh, the other big difference is the BIOS is slightly different. So the micro architecture in the BIOS, some of them already set up will work like that. This, I don't know if any of these are. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, that might be something that's a little bit over my head and something that's definitely worth more than the dollar PC. Um, but still, if I can get this to work pretty easily, the other thing that I'll have to do with this is because this does operate or this is set up where it's on a 90 degree shift, I will have to probably either on the motherboard itself or on this CPU uh, do just a little bit of filing or on the motherboard, maybe use an X-Acto knife to cut the little tabs out of the socket so this will fit in at a 90 degree turn instead of the customary, you know, where it's supposed to be set. The arrows line up the same place, but the tabs do not. So I would have to adjust where the tabs line up. Still, one other thing is if, if nothing else works, if I can't get the one with DDR3 to work, I might be able to take one of the motherboards out of a smaller slimline case, put it in a larger case so it does fit a full-size card like the GTX 1660 I've got or an RX 480. Now, that 480 is going to pull more power, so I'd have to be careful and I'd have to make sure that, one, I have a decent power supply. Uh, I would hope that maybe at least one of these is 335 to 350 watts, and I would have to be really careful. I would not be able to stress this, this machine out because that RX 480 will take more power. I, I probably could get away with the GTX 1660 because it only pulls about 100, 120 watts, I think it is. So, yeah, I might have better success there. And if I can get DDR3 memory, I'm, I'm not a fool enough to think that the 8 gig sticks of DDR3 I've got will work in there, but I can try it. I am pretty confident that I've got some 4 gig sticks that might work. 50-50 uh, chance, but definitely two gig sticks will work. So we'll uh, we'll have to see because we got now we've got a couple of two gig sticks and one gig sticks, uh, you know at least a couple of four that I already had and a couple of eight. So we've got something working there that we can use. 
Still one other thing that we have to be concerned with though, and the reason why we can't just make a straight sleeper build out of this is because the panel does come off of the opposite side. Now, most of the PCs that you see now, well, the panel comes off the left-hand side. You're actually looking in the side of the case, whereas you're looking into the innards of the case, your front panel is on your right. This is completely opposite. If you take off the panel now to look on the inside of the PC, your front panel is now on the left. So that complicates things a little bit because motherboards are configured where they will fit in the other side, the, the, the motherboard that's configured the other way. So we'll have to see if I can find a motherboard that will configure or is configured or maybe have to do some modification to the case itself. I don't know. We'll see. Again, is that worth it on a 80-something cent PC? I don't know. Maybe. So we'll have to see what happens there. In any case, it ought to be a couple of pretty cool projects that I can get out of here, uh, including the Xeon or the server or the Q6600 or the sleeper build. And I, I should be able to get a, a little bit of content and a little bit of fun out of this. Now, some of this is going to be disastrous and completely blow up in my face. I'll let you guys know about it. I'll record that and I will show you because, yeah, I'm not afraid to do that either. Um, and it will probably make for a pretty good fail video. But some of these are bound to try to work. And then what happens with the extra parts? I'm bound to have DDR2 memory that I'm not using. I'm bound to have a few sticks of DDR3. Uh, okay, you're not getting my DDR3. The DDR2 and some of the extra CPUs that are left over will probably be sold as a bundle somewhere on Facebook mar Marketplace or on, fa on um, eBay or something like that. I don't know yet. We might have to just gather them all up and sell them as a lot, uh, except for the ones I'm using. Yeah, past that. I don't know. Uh, the cases after that happens, the cases of motherboards being stripped out of everything useful, including whichever power supplies might be good or whatever, they will probably have to go to recycle. There's a responsible recycler that is uh, probably about two miles from me. I have to go out of the uh, subdivision I live in and I have to make a turn actually down toward the beach. And it's actually not too far down that road. So I'll, I'll probably be going and dropping those off there. And boy, aren't they going to love to see me that day. But Hey, it can't be any more than 10 of them, right? I fit 10 of them in my car, so I should be able to take all of them down there. Anyway, uh, the, the thing here will be to not only do the projects, but if I'm going to get rid of them or sell things or whatever, do that responsibly as well. And so that's my commitment to do that. I still have three other PCs at my sister's house to pick up and, and uh, see if they work or not. And all three of those, one of them's an E-Machines and the other two are the large uh, Dells. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, it's a pretty good start to begin with. I'm hoping that those other two PCs, I'm hoping maybe at least one of them has DDR3 memory I can add to my stack. I don't know. We should have enough to play with and work with. And if things work out, might have a decent uh, mid-level, I don't want to say classic video you know, uh, gaming PC, but maybe it's enough to play something like older games like Dirt or uh, Unreal or something like that on. Who knows? Ooh, if I can if I can get a PC where I can play uh, something like Unreal Tournament 2003 or 2004 or something like that, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be all right. We'll see. And of course, you know, we might have to try some esports. See if any esports work on it at all. I don't know. There's a lot of people out there still rocking older PCs, um, so we might have to see if any of these will measure up or if we can make them measure up. So that is all I have for this time. Uh, if you found any of this information useful, entertaining, helpful, interesting, you know, insert adjective here, uh, go ahead and throw a like on the video if you don't mind. If you're not already subscribed, please do. I'd, I'd really, really appreciate that. Just past 1,200 not too long ago. Thank you so much for that. It's amazing. Uh, looking to continue that. Um, next step is 1,500. And obviously, just to keep growing the channel. Uh, I do, uh, if you... You know, if you're not going to like or subscribe, I do have other socials that you can check out, including our Discord server, and I stream on that, that purple channel occasionally. So, yeah, be sure to check me out there. But if you don't do any of that other stuff, just do me one favor. And let's be good to each other. Smile, wave, hold the door open, say good morning, anything. You'd be surprised how a small gesture on your part could make somebody's entire day. Uh, it might even make your day better, too. You never know. So... Yeah, that being it, um, I got quite a bit to go. So until I get myself into something I got no business getting into, or 10 somethings I got no business getting into, or 11, or 12, that's definitely going to do it for me. So 
I'll see you later. <laughs>